Our tour ends at perhaps one of the most iconic of Scorsese's film locations. The Copacabana nightclub opened in 1940 at 10 East 60th Street. It remained in this location for over 50 years until it moved to West 57th Street. From its inception, the Copacabana was involved with the New York Mafia, and in Scorsese's movies it represents a sort of mobster heaven. Frank Costello, an Italian gangster who is the boss of the Genovese crime family, was one of the original partners. In Goodfellas, which came out in 1990, two years before the club moved, the Copacabana symbolizes to Henry Hill the glamorous life of a gangster. The movie opens with Henry reflecting, As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Once Henry achieves this goal, his visits to the Copa cement his status as an important player. As Scorsese says, when you were able to get a table there, it was like being in the court of the kings. The real guys were up there. Goodfellas documents the rise and fall of Henry Hill and his friends over a period of years and has a long scene that takes place in the Copacabana and shows how Henry Hill's crime has gained him a life of luxury and special treatment. Hill and his associates take their girlfriends out to fancy dinners here and use their money and influence to terrorize others. The mobsters, especially Joe Pesci's character, display a joking attitude that easily breaks down into brutality when angered. Their luxurious world comes crashing down at the end of the movie. In Raging Bull, the Copa is also the scene of a brutal fight between Joe Pesci, who plays Jake LaMotta's brother, and a local mob boss. The scene ends with Pesci slamming a car door repeatedly on the man's arm showcasing an ability to play violent characters that would help him to be cast as Tommy in Goodfellas. In Raging Bull, as in Goodfellas, the Copacabana is the theater for mindless violence, exposing the flaws and inner insanity of the wealthy mafia patrons. This tough guy pattern of behavior is certainly the one Scorsese most often portrays, his personal conception of the repressed Italian-American.